Hello, friends, and welcome in for episode 13 of Vol Club Confidential. I'm your host, Austin Price of VolQuest.com. An exciting show tonight as we have Tennessee head coach Josh Heupel on the show. But before we get together with Coach Heupel, we bring in Spire CEO James Clawson. James, you're coming off a watch party for the Vanderbilt game in Nashville. you got another watch party coming up this weekend for the Missouri game. That's here in Knoxville. Kind of take me through what the reaction has been for those watch parties. You've had them in Chattanooga, Memphis, all over the state. Yeah, Charlotte. Atlanta. So great response. Uh, I think fans have really enjoyed coming together, being meeting other ball club members. Uh, you know, there's been, you know, we've we've gotten a lot of members that that out of those out of those watch parties too. So um, I think it's been a really cool experience. But yeah, Saturday night, um, Knoxville in Knoxville Old City Sports Bar downtown. When you get to those events, what can fans expect? Is it just simply watching the balls? Yeah, we're watching a... the balls. You know, we're we're there to answer questions. You know, if you have questions about what we do and how we do it and things like that, we you know we're there and we want to we want to be able to answer those questions. You look forward to next month the SEC tournament. You know, you all will be there. Kind of take me through, kind of you know, some expectations and fan interactions you'll have at the SEC tournament. Yeah, still working through that. You know, but we'll have you know we'll have some stuff maybe before or after games, uh, depending on what days they play in Nashville. But we're really excited about it. All right, Tennessee playing well in basketball as they head towards the SEC tournament. Spring practice just over a month away, and we now bring in the guest for tonight's show, that being head coach Josh Heupel. Coach, we uh, start off with uh, your childhood. Kind of take me through growing up in, in, in Aberdeen, South Dakota. You know, the population just over 20,000 probably back then. I was like 28 in 2020. So, you know, what was that like? Factory of football players, let me tell you, coming out of, uh, of Aberdeen. Uh, my mom was a high school principal. My dad was uh, initially a high school coach and, and then moved up to the, uh, the Division II college there. And uh, my childhood, as long as I can remember, was, you know, going to sporting events. Uh, it could be the high school. It could be the college. Um, you know, with my dad, I mean, I remember driving to training camp uh, two days, maybe three days at that time in, in college football and, you know, being there at 5.30, 5.45 in the morning and, and uh, mixing some tang up for the guys in the morning as they came in, probably eating donuts. Not sure that's on uh, on our menu in the mornings, but, uh, you know, hanging around the guys, sitting in meetings. Uh, my dad was a defense coordinator, sitting in linebacker and DB meetings, being out on the practice field with them. And, and uh, some buddies would come over, would be out at practice hanging out. Um, um, you know, spent time in the equipment room, changing face mask cleats, uh, the old screw and cleats at that time. And, and uh, you know, my life centered around ball. Had a lot of family that was close by. And so, um, you know, a lot of time spent with fam- family, too. Do, are there times where you just you smell a smell and it takes you back to, you know, doing those things? Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's sometimes you just smell something or you're, or you're, or you hear it's noise and it just reminds you, triggers back. First day of training camp, cut grass, a little bit of dew on the ground. Uh, that takes me right back to, uh, to my childhood for, for sure. And, and, uh, um, I just think about, you know, the memories that I have growing up, um, you know, being around our family, um, you know, after his games or after my games too, a lot of family would be in town and, um, you know, you just, takes you back and then at the same time with where I'm at now um, incorporating our family my kids out on the practice field a bunch with me and in the meeting rooms at times and you know my dad's still around I'm retired now and so uh, I get a chance to, to spend a lot of time with him out on the practice field or, or around our facility I know he's around enough to kind of it's a nice as you told me back in the preseason it's a nice set of eyes and realistically an unbiased set of eyes because he doesn't have a tie to wins or losses. I mean, I always want you to win, but at the yeah. same time, like, I think it's nice to kind of have that feedback of like, okay, he's not vested in this kid. He's just telling you what he sees. Yeah, for me, you know, you get into the into the middle of practice and, and you're in the nuts and bolts of it. Um, at times, he can sit back and, and just kind of see a, a 360 degree view of, of everything that's going on, you know, from equipment things to, you know, coaching staff or, you know, maybe notice some things with the player's body language, whatever it might be. Um, he doesn't get in the X's and O's very often, but uh, for me, it's an unbiased opinion. I know I'm going to get it uh, straight from uh, from what he sees to uh, to coming to me, and uh, I appreciate that too. And uh, again, for me, like those are awesome moments. 
If you've not seen Coach Heupel's dad, he's Coach Heupel with white hair and sometimes a mustache. Um, <laughs> not sometimes. He's always got the well, mustache a little thicker at times. <laughs> that's, I think it's sometimes he's been he's shaved it and it's yeah. growing back in. Um, when you go back to when you were you know, a ball boy and you were helping do all those things, at what point did you go, man, I just really want to play football? Like, I mean, is there a moment in time where you just knew that like you wanted to play football and specifically quarterback? I, I love basketball. I, I, I got to throw that out there. Uh, that's what you keep I telling thought. me you're that's the best shot I, on uh, campus. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> you need to come over and check it out. Um, <laughs> the, uh, you know, for me, I, I grew up. Um, sports was everything um, in our family, um, and for me, um, I love playing, love competing, love doing, and, and being in the middle of it. Um, when I grew up, there wasn't little league football, so you couldn't play tackle football until seventh grade. So I played flag football, fifth and sixth uh, tackle football in, in seventh grade, uh, playing all those sports, baseball too, uh, up until high school. Um, I just loved whatever I was in, and, and whatever season it was, that's what I thought I wanted to be. After my sophomore year, uh, played a bunch, started at quarterback, uh, was six man in basketball. Um, were successful on the basketball side. I just I really enjoyed. And you know, grabbed onto the opportunity that a quarterback has to impact the game, the natural leadership position that you're in. Um, I love the X's and O's of it, and and uh, you know that's when I kind of you know detoured uh, towards uh, towards football. Yeah, when you played, not to date you. You had yeah, you know, don't, don't in, in basketball. You in basketball. You either you might have been in that transition from like the real short shorts to the big baggy shorts that was in the early nineties. Oh, we got the baggy shorts. There's no doubt. I can't believe it's trending back the other way at this point. And then know? in football, you had like those big oversized jerseys, the big shoulder pads. Yeah. Today, everything's so form fitted. Like the the quarterbacks in the NFL look like they're not even wearing pads yeah. at times. Yeah, the, the the weight of the equipment. You know, I don't know how much faster I would have been. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I would have been able to, to, to shake some people down. No, we, uh, um, it was just uh, uh, a lot of fun growing up in that era. What was it like playing high school football in a small town, South Dakota? Because, I mean, you know, just I can just imagine like, you know, back in the 90s, 80s, 90s, the, the lights at the stadiums weren't real great. So I'm just afraid dark in the end zones and, 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 and just kind of a, the whole town came out. Because that's what people did back then. You know, there was no streaming of games. There was no Twitter and, and all the social stuff that people, you know, don't go out to now. They, they just kind of invested in the community stuff. Yeah, sports in, in Aberdeen and in that area. Um, were a huge part of what the community did. Uh, you know, that's the, the school, uh, great student body support, but the whole community would come out and, and show out for, for those events. And uh, Friday nights were awesome. Um, we weren't a highly successful football program when I first got there, and, and uh, we kind of built it up to, to being a football team that had a chance to compete for a championship. We didn't win one, but uh, became a really good program. And then on the basketball side of it, we're a perennial uh, power, one of the top two, three teams in, inside the state, won a bunch of conference championships. And, and uh, you know, we played JV sophomore varsity, and by halftime of, of the sophomore game, I mean, the arena was sold out. You couldn't yeah. find a seat. And, um, you know, growing up in, in that town, everybody grew up dreaming of, of being on that field or on that court and a great sense of pride uh, within our community. You go to Weber State, and then from there you end up going to Snow College after an ACL tear. Mm -hmm. Kind of take me through that time in, in, in your football career. What's what's you know, what's that like? What are you thinking? It you know, it all leads to Oklahoma and a national championship and a Heisman runner up, but it, right. it, in that moment in time, kind of what is younger you thinking? Man, uh, really confident in who I am as a player and, and work habits and all that, but at the same time, um, your journey's your own and there's a lot of uncertainty and, and uh, you know, for me, um, walked on at the junior college, paid my own way, uh, lived in a three-bedroom apartment with seven other guys, so you can imagine how tight the quarters were and and uh you know snow junior college um love my time there um but it's on the other side of the the wasatch mountain front there's there's nobody on that <laughs> side it was a one one light town um there wasn't a lot to do um, when you weren't uh, working on football um we're really successful had a really good uh, a lot of really good players that were there some guys that went and played in the nfl uh, that were teammates of mine um but it, it wasn't glamorous by any stretch of the imagination you're talking about you know 16 17 hours 
hour bus trips. We'd load up Thursday night at midnight, uh, drive uh, through the night, end up in Vegas, get a breakfast buffet and get back on the bus. And, you know, you're all over uh, the state of Arizona at that time. That was who was who was in our league. And so, you know, you're in Yuma, Arizona and and, uh, you know, playing a game Saturday afternoon, maybe Saturday evening, and didn't get back until late Sunday. And uh, you're Do you know, all staring, staring the week right back in, in, its, uh, in its face. And um, best of time, uh, worst of times, all at, at one time. And uh, a lot of fun, though. Best story you can tell from those bus rides from from your time and and yeah, the best ones I probably can't tell on, on this radio <laughs> show, but uh, you know at that time every seat was full, so I would lay uh, not in the aisle but across. Uh, we'd have one guy in each uh, two seat that uh, had the primary uh, seat. I'd lay down the down the aisle and and uh, somebody you know had their legs over the top and and it was cram full. You're talking about 17 hours. Yeah. And, uh, <sighs> um, you get to know everybody inside your football team really quickly. <laughs> you know all the habits and bad habits. That's right. Um, you end up going to Oklahoma. You have this unbelievable storybook career there and you finish runner-up for the Heisman. You win a national championship. If you told the kid that was the Gatorade Player of the Year in South Dakota that in a couple of years he'd be the starting quarterback at Oklahoma, Blue Blood Drop Program, playing in the Orange Bowl against Florida State for the national title, what would that kid have said? Uh, first of all, you would have realized he was living, living a dream, uh, for sure. Um, I don't know that I would have ever said that that's how I saw my road uh, winding and, and finishing up. Uh, at the same time, had a lot of confidence in myself and, and who I was and how I worked and what type of teammate I was going to be. And um, that that time at Oklahoma, uh, going to a program at that time, they hadn't been to a bowl game for, I think, five yeah. straight years. And, and uh, uh, it was a unique time uh, at, inside that program, a unique set of guys that uh, are still really connected. Uh, it's amazing to see how highly successful those players are outside of the game now. Uh, they've taken those characteristics and traits and turned it into to life lessons that have allowed them to be successful in all areas of, of business and, and life. And um, it was the coolest journey, man, and uh, really a lot of fun in building and resurrecting something and, and uh, something that uh, for me has kind of always been the best times. You know, I talked about my high school program. We weren't highly successful, didn't have a lot of wins uh, when I first got there or even my, my sophomore year and, and kind of built that program up. Same at Oklahoma and, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. Kind of same here when you got here versus, you know. Yeah, I, I think. I know you're still in the building, but yeah, I mean, we, you know. We, we definitely, we definitely but similar are. similar like where, you're, where you started. Yeah, I, I think that was one of the things that, that uh, I recognized and saw in Tennessee, having played here as a competitor, having grown up, seeing the power T, uh, the power of this program, um, this football program and, and the fan base. Uh, I saw a unique opportunity. It's rare that you get an opportunity to take over a prestigious program like this, top 10 in the history of college football and wins. Uh, and at the same time, you get a chance to do it in, in your own way. And, um, you know, when I, you know, got an opportunity to take this thing, it was a no-brainer. It just, uh, you get the right alignment, man. You can go accomplish a lot of great things. And we got great people inside the building. Our staff and our players are absolutely phenomenal. So when you're up there on the stage at the Orange Bowl, tossing out oranges, did, 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 was that one of those moments where you're like, man, 20 years ago I was doing the same thing as a player? Man, it hit me, uh, you know, going to the game, I, I knew there would be things that would, you know, take me back Trigger, in, in yeah. time. Absolutely. And, you know, going down there for media day brought back some things, um, you know, two or three weeks before the game. But the bus ride in was the same route that we took into the stadium when I was a player and, and just being along that path, uh, Billy Ray Johnson, uh, who's our chief of staff, uh, was a part of our program at Oklahoma too. I just leaned back and I said, man, this like literally takes me right back to that moment and had a bunch of uh, uh, teammates that uh, I played with that came in uh, a day or two before the game and got a chance to see them on the sidelines before the game. And then I got a chance to celebrate with them afterwards too. It was, uh, it was a cool take you back moment. How neat is that? And you talked about just the brotherhood, but, you know, to get to see them at different stops along the way, whether that's when you were at OC at Missouri or at UCF, now here, you know, just kind of getting to stay in touch with some guys. And I know you're busy, you know, doing your own thing, got your own family, yeah. just like they're busy with their families. But to kind of reconnect every now and again and just kind of tell some old war stories and catch up, how much fun is that? Yeah, I've gotten to be a lot better player over the years, and I think they have <laughs> too. Uh, I just, it's something that I talk about with our players uh, of enjoying the journey and enjoying the small moments, man. The, the things, 
that you miss. You obviously miss game day, but you miss the interactions. You miss being in the locker room, you know, cracking jokes on each other, telling stories. Uh, you miss the the pain, the heartache, and, and the blood, the sweat, the tears all summer long. Um, you miss all those things, and and. Uh, it's unique because of those shared experiences, because of the things that you've had to go through together as a group of guys inside of that locker room, the uniqueness of that being such an influential part of your life, that 18 to 22 year old uh, experience. Um, as soon as you see those guys, man, you go right back to, to where you were and, and uh you know, you stay in touch with a bunch of them, but that doesn't mean that it's happening, you know, once a week or once a month. You know, sometimes it's once a year. And, you know, I got a chance to celebrate um, or go back and, and see one of uh, our teammates inducted in the College Football Hall of Fame. And there were probably 25, 30 guys there. And that was a great night just uh, reliving some of the moments. If you could go back, there's a time machine and you could walk through a portal, not the transfer portal, but a portal, um, and, and go back to one moment in your playing career high school, Pee Wee. Juco, Oklahoma, where would it be? Man, as a as a player, there was probably a game or two in high school I'd, I'd go back to um, and uh, try to right a wrong and, <laughs> and end up with a win and, and get ourselves to the state championship game. As a, as a player, you sometimes and as a coach for sure, you remember uh, some of the losses. But uh, as a player, I'd go back to you know probably our month in October where we played you know three ranked teams. I think two of them were number one, number two in the country, and and. Uh, just the, the energy that was created, the belief inside of our fan base and, and uh, enjoying that journey with our guys. Playing in, in, in Aberdeen just feels like a like there are some old guys sitting around a barbershop that are like, man, you remember when that Hypo kid played here? And you know, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, like they, they love to tell the past. Like, you know, I mean, like it I won't say it's like, you know, the, it, it's it's Floyd's barbershop in Mayberry, but at the same time it's it's a nice reflection of kind of like the small town USA. Is that kind of where it was? Yeah, I mean, I remember, you know, my dad radio show um, when he was a high school coach Saturday mornings. A bunch of guys inside the community. Um, you know, we had two high schools, but there were some small town high schools around the area. They'd do a radio show, and every coach got on there, and it was kind of coffee time, man, and and uh, telling stories from the night before. Um, those are great memories for me, just being around it. But uh, I think, uh, you know, for all of our, our teammates uh, that uh, that played there, um, we still relive some of those moments too, and and I'm sure people in the community do as well. Senior year, biggest rival? Did you win that game? Um, we did. Uh, we did on the football side of it. Um, we lost the conference championship game to a perennial power, um, but uh, we got most of the the big time rivalries inside of our our uh, our league. Yeah, my senior year, we did not beat our biggest rival. James is Morristown West Trojans. James Clawson, who was on earlier in the program, beat my Morristown East Hurricanes fifty nine to seven. It was ugly. Um, when you get done with 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 Oklahoma, you have a couple stops in the NFL and then you decided pretty quick to go into coaching well I didn't decide to go into coaching uh I couldn't pass physical anymore so the the game told me it's time to to did you pass the physical now no no chance if I couldn't pass it then um just uh coming off surgery and and uh the injury that I had uh, just getting range of motion back wasn't able to do it and um ultimately got into coaching I knew whenever I was done that's what I was going to do so while I was rehabbing I was back in Norman for one year volunteered uh, spent a lot of time uh, on the offense side of the ball spent some time with the offensive line uh, I think that was one of the best things that I did as a young coach is experiencing what's going on up front not that I didn't understand the scheme but the fundamentals uh, how to identify mismatches and, and how to protect your guys put them in a position to be successful it was really important to me in, in my growth as a coach when you're rehabbing how much talk did you have with your dad about, you know, I think I want to give this coaching stuff a try. I mean, I know you thought you might want to do it, but what was kind of his advice to you? Yeah, I, I think once, uh, you know, I realized that I wasn't going to be able to pass the physical, um, you know, failed one for the World League at that time um, where guys went over overseas and, and couldn't pass one to get into training camp. Um, at the end of the day, he knew that coaching was – going to be something that I that I did. Sure. I, I loved it. When I got into coaching, it was probably to be a part of something that's bigger than just you, be a part of a team in the competition, the side of it, you know, and, and the X's and O's. And as I've gotten further into it, uh, it's what I saw in my dad's experience, the relationships you form, how you impact people, and helping them go pursue their goals and dreams. I think a lot of coaches, you know, tell their kids, man, if you can do something else, go do something else. Because you do sacrifice a lot. You know, our family sacrifice 
sacrificed. I sacrificed a lot of time with, with my dad, you know, where it was just him and I, and, you know, he was on the road recruiting. But I think that's also because of my experience with my dad and understanding how valuable those experiences are, why we try to incorporate our families into absolutely everything that we, we do. And that's why you see them at ball walk. You see them yeah. on the field before the ball game. Um, they're going to be in practices. They're going to sit in meeting rooms. They're going to be a part of uh, the culture of, of Tennessee football. Your family comes to ball calls every week. They do. <laughs> yeah. and, and then you get to, you know, you, you best, hey, the best 10 minutes is my ride home. You ride with my, home with right. your son. That's right. Um, kind of take me, I'm not asking you what you talk about. That's between you and him, but kind of take me through that what do you think it's like for him and then what's it like for you he loves being there he likes feeling the the energy and excitement occasionally he's going to jump on and and, uh, try to be a part of the show as well it's a calhoun's cornbread there's no telling what he is going to say when he gets on the on the radio too it's it's live it's my wife's like biggest fear when he jumps (laughs) jumps on the mic Uh, but the ride home is is absolutely awesome sometimes it's football uh, it's usually not what's going on in your day uh, and when you talk with him, and he's going a thousand different directions, so there's no telling where the conversation is gonna gonna lead. But uh, it's an opportunity for me as a dad just to to spend some time him and I, and, and uh, kind of catch up on what's been going on. So you you, you get back, you, you start with the offensive line stuff as you just talked about, then you go to Arizona, coach tight ends. Yeah. So you you've kind of all of a sudden started bouncing around here, former quarterback, coaching tight ends. Um, you know, what'd you learn in the year, year there? Yeah. Uh, you know, how to build a program, uh, how to recruit um, when, um, you know, you're going to have to compete against guys that maybe have some intrinsic, uh, you know, opportunities or, or uh, advantages and um, learned a lot of ball there, uh, learned how to grow as a young coach, learned how to communicate and, you know, run your own room and, and what do you want it to look like? What's the energy inside that room going to be and, and develop those relationships? And so that year was a, a great year of growth for me, um, you know, as a coach and, and as a person. You come back to Oklahoma and then you start this run on quarterbacks. So, you know, Sam Bradford, you're instrumental in him winning the Heisman. Uh, you know, you've had good quarterbacks every step of the way since then. Um, during that run at, at Oklahoma, you know, your biggest takeaway, because you go from being, you know, national championship quarterback to now assistant coach, what are the differences? Yeah, there's there's huge difference. <laughs> Just the amount of time that you're spending in the room, and uh, I think learning how to recruit, um, learn how to develop those guys. Um, you know, you take some of the experiences that I that I had as a player, and you try to incorporate that and put those guys in a, in a better position and make sure that they're going to give be given every opportunity to to be successful. I think some of the experiences are able to allow you to relate to your players as, as a young coach in a in a unique way, and um, you know you're competing on the biggest stage you know week in and week out and, and uh, expected to win every ball game too when your time ends there i know it didn't end like you wanted it to but at the same time like it, it seems like you kind of got motivated from that and you've been on this like really quick climb since then you have this fire in the belly like you you're like super competitive in everything you do like when you're competing with these recruits when they're in town you <laughs> you don't like losing in anything did has that always been that way, or did it maybe get amped up a little bit more coming out of that? No, I, I've always been competitive. Uh, I think that dates back to just my journey where I started and where I finished in, in my playing career, too. Um, that's probably one of my strongest traits if I, I take – myself out of it and look back at myself and and um, I think that competitive spirit can drive you when nobody's watching to, to do the things that you need to to continue to grow as a player uh, we look for that inside of our program we want highly competitive guys that uh, are going to ignite a fire under themselves they're not looking for us to always ignite that that spark and and um, but certainly coming out of that experience you learn you grow um, it was an opportunity for me to get away from Oklahoma and, and learn some other things under under sure. other people People. A lot of things that I've taken from Oklahoma. Uh, there's some things that I've learned from other guys that I've been with too that have helped helped me allow to 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 really grow as, as a person and how I want to connect and and uh, build a culture inside of a room. And then on the offensive side of the ball, I got an opportunity to get back to some things that uh, that I wanted to that uh, are still a part of of who we are here at Tennessee. 
Anybody that you, any mentor, anybody that you leaned on during that time? Um, I, I don't know if there's one guy. The, the biggest people in my life, just because of, of the role that they have, is my parents, but also what they did professionally. Um, those guys are, are my mom and my dad. Uh, Both leaders. They are, and, and so those are, are people that I've certainly leaned on in, in all my experiences. You know, as a player, I got recruited by Mike Leach. Mike's somebody that uh, I stayed in touch with uh, throughout my career. And that's, you know, true to who he, he was, you know, one of a kind, right? Sure. But he, he knew who he was and, and he wasn't going to deviate. Um, I took a lot of things from him. And then certainly on the X's and O's side of it, just, you know, how you're going to play the game in space and, and looking at it from a different perspective. And, and that's certainly a part of who we are. His tentacles are all over college football. Obviously, you know, you're one of them, but your offense a little bit different than his. His is so much more short stuff, and mm-hmm. you all take a lot more shots vertically. Um, when did you start to morph kind of what you had learned under him and build on it to build for yourself? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, one of the, the things that, that Mike did is that at that time, the game was really being played in a box. And, yep. and uh, he looked at it differently. How do we get players in space? How do we get the ball in space? And in some ways, simplified the game for those skill players and in some ways, the quarterback too. So those principles are still still a huge part of, of what we've done. My first experience with Temple really happened when I was at Oklahoma. Uh, we came out of a Fiesta Bowl. Um, we got beat by West Virginia. Rich Rod was the head coach. He had already left, but his staff was still there. Uh, Pat White and, and that crew kind of went up and down the field on us. We had a good team coming back. Um, we were operating out of the huddle system at that time, but um, made a philosophical change. And that was a huge springboard to, to who we are and what we do offensively even today you get to missouri and you you put up some massive numbers up there with drew lock at quarterback Uh, first taste of being in the league as a coach uh wouldn't equate it necessarily to athens or knoxville or or tuscaloosa but still in the league um what did you learn about competing in this league playing in this league all that line of scrimmage is is so different um the physicality the depth uh, of you know, every program up front, um, you're going to have to strap it on and, and be an extremely physical football team week in and week out. And I, I think that's one of the, the things that is striking and, and probably in some ways we struggled with in year one is just the depth um, as we were developing our, our program here uh, to be able to sustain, uh, you know, 12 weeks of football inside of this league and, and uh, great players all over the field. Uh, but the front seven defensively and, and obviously the line of scrimmage on, on offensive lines is, is just different here. And the other piece of it, too, is it was great for me is just getting exposed to the recruiting inside of this line, uh, this league. Uh, the landscape in recruiting is, is so different than it is <laughs> yeah. in the other leagues. It, uh, it's highly competitive, and it's something that you, you truly are, are doing. People say this, but you truly have to do it 365 days out of the year. You get to UCF, you have a nice three-year run there, the last year being the COVID year, which was just odd for everybody. Um, Tennessee comes open. You had a you know few people that had some ties to here, like a Brandon Lawson who was in your building. Job comes open, and Danny calls. Kind of take me through what you're thinking at that point. Is this just like, I want to take a look at this? Is this, it's Tennessee, we got to go? all the stuff surrounding all the investigation stuff like what yeah. kind of what's your thought process is is you know Danny's called and now you're like you know, rotten play there. Yeah, uh, Tennessee, the brand, um, the game day experience, the ability to compete at the highest level, all of those things were, were easy to see and, and known by me, things that uh, that I wanted to have an opportunity to do. You want to be able to take care of your staff, um, make sure that your players are having a great experience. We have all the tools and resources to do all of those things, and so now you get a chance to just compete. It was really important to me that leadership was aligned, and, and I say that meaning that, you know, your, your president, your chancellor, your like director there's a clear vision on what they want what they expect and a pathway to help you get to where you want to go got a chance to talk to those three individuals and and um, was really just blown away by uh, their passion for Tennessee the people of Tennessee but the, their passion for Tennessee football and you know how important it was for them to to see it be successful and be back on top you, you know what you know Chancellor Plowman and, and you know what you know, Randy Boyd, they're going to give you the best sales pitch they're trying to get sure. you here. Did it help having Danny, who you had just worked for, as like, okay, you're new to this too. What are you seeing? Well, I think 
one of the things that was important to me is just figure out, you know, what the landscape truly was. Sure. And, and so my relationship with Danny allowed me to have great trust and the things that I was hearing were the actual things that were going on and, and the truth of, of, you know, where we were at and, and how we were going to get to where we needed to go. And so the ability to have that relationship with him allowed me to trust everything that I was hearing, uh, believe in, in the opportunity that was here. And then also once I took the job to truly hit the ground running from the first moment and all of those experiences that we had had, both positive and negative, you know, what happens, you know, when a player doesn't do exactly what he's supposed to do, um, you know, to, to how we were going to build a program allowed me to just hit the ground running and, and uh, hire a great staff and go compete every single day. All right, you come in, you pull in for the the, the big press conference, your, your son, we talked about this back in August, your son like wants to go out on the yeah. field and run around, which he does now before the, every game and, and catches balls from you. But when that day ended and you kind of walked into what is basically an empty set of offices at that point, your thoughts? Yeah, there weren't many people around. <laughs> you're, 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 get, 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 I mean, get, what, what's that feeling like? Because all yeah. of a sudden it's like, okay, we got to build this thing. I mean, you knew a few guys that were coming with you, but like right. you still had to construct a bunch of others. Absolutely. Uh, just going back to my son, uh, he was the hardest sales pitch. Daughter was fully in from the from the moment. Uh, my son had a lot of a lot of tears there. Uh, but once he got off the plane in the car and then walked out onto the stadium before I got announced, uh, when he looked around, he was like, "All right, this is pretty cool. I'm I'm all in." Um, for me, the opportunity to to walk into the building, uh, meet the players, uh, I think that was one of the most important things uh, that I got an opportunity to do right uh, at the beginning. Uh, they got a chance for you know them to get to know me, and with all the things and all the turmoil that they had been through over two months, uh, gave them an opportunity to figure out who I was. You know, I talked for maybe 10, 15 minutes, got a chance to introduce you know my family, but then we just sat there and talked for another hour and 15, hour and 30 minutes. You know, some of those things were were really important that they wanted to talk about. Some of them you know didn't have a whole lot of impact on on what we were going to do and who we were going to be, but they were important to them in that moment. And after leaving. Even that uh, felt like uh, we're going to be able to to hit the ground running when we got back to work in in a couple of days. You know, looked around the building. There weren't very many people uh, still left in the building. Uh, had a lot of guys from UCF that I knew were going to make the trip up in the, in the coming days, and then had to go hire uh, you know the rest of the staff and, and find the right people. Uh, people that are going to be uh, share a vision of, of who I was and, and what we wanted to be about in the building. Then we're going to be great teachers, and uh, I absolutely love the staff that get a chance to compete with every day. And that's it for part one of our Vol Club Confidential with head coach Josh Heupel. Here's a sneak peek towards next week's part two with the head Vol. What game lives on in the memory, in your memory the most, as player or coach? Man, um, what sticks with you? I don't know. I think the uh, the Orange Bowl. Um, you know, just the culmination of this season. If you weren't coaching, what would you be doing? Holy cow! I really don't have an answer for that one. I cannot imagine doing doing anything else at this point 